In this video, we will discuss about post translation modification. How uh, or uh, we can say the history of post translation modification in the order uh, by which different post translation modification has been discovered. So let us start with the phosphorylation. It has been discovered during the uh, this phosphorylation has been discovered in 1906. Uh, during the uh, early stage of 19 uh, early stage of uh, 20th century so in this phosphorylation uh, it plays an important role uh, for activating the various signals that can cause uh, different changes in the cells such as epigenetic changes and we have seen one example of phosphorylation in our previous videos where it in one of our last videos you can say where it affects the global mRNA uh, translation with the phosphorylation of E2IF alpha complex. Uh, next thing is the next post translation modification that has been identified is methylation, and this methylation is mainly occurs in within the nucleus, uh, and it is uh, related to. Uh, histone proteins such as uh, the histone proteins are uh, able to function or they are able to translate when this uh, histone uh, proteins are methylated next kind of uh, next post translation modification that has been identified is uh, sulfation and this sulfation is more related to the stabilization of the stabilization of the protein in the final structure stabilization or maturation of protein in the final structure next part uh, post translation modification that has been identified is acetylation and it is identified in 1964 so acetylation is uh, mainly occurs uh, mainly occurs in the acetylation is mainly occurs in the uh, cytosols uh, it is because uh, it is related to any uh, I'm not able to recall the function of this acetylation but you can uh, get more information about this from the descriptions that has been provided uh, or the reference that has been provided in the description uh, next uh, post translation modification is ubiquitinization so what happens in this ubiquitinization is that uh, is that proteins that are uh, non-functional or we can say protein that are not able to acquire the native structure are been uh, then transferred uh, for are need to be transferred for recycling uh, so one of the process to do this recycling is via ubiquitinization where uh, proteins are being ubiquitous after proteins are ubiquitinization after proteins are ubiquitinated then they can be directed towards proteasomal degradation so we will discuss uh, for uh, coming forward we will discuss only few of the post translation modification importance and if you want to know importance of all the post translation modification you can go in the reference that is provided in the description so after that this pre prenylation post translation modification has been identified in 1978 and then in 1981 the n glycosylation has been identified and this is one of the most important post translation modification as around 50 percent of the proteins post translation modification occurs in, uh, in the form of N glycosylation and this glycosylation is also important in terms of uh, diseases as different uh, as in terms of diseases as different diseases will lead to different kind of markers and one of the marker is the different glycosylation profiles they develop in different kind of diseases so different glycosylation profiles can be a, a good indication that uh, the cells are not healthy and they are deviating from their normal condition and another example is that the expression of uh, 
the CD44. That is also uh, the result of change in the glycosylation pattern. And we know that CD44 is the biomarker, is the marker for the cancer cells. Next one, in 1982, the biosylization has been identified. And then in 1988, uh, this different glycose, glycosylase phosphate terlization has been uh, discovered and then 1992 o glycosylation has been identified the main o glycosylation has occurs mainly in the uh, golgi apparatus and whereas the n glycosylation starts in endoplasmic reticulum and then it further modifies in the golgi apparatus whereas o glycosylation starts in golgi apparatus and uh, more completed within the golgi apparatus different section of golgi apparatus after that the c glycosylation has been identified in 1994 then sumosylation sumosylation has been identified in 1996 it is related to the uh, stability of the uh, protein and then in 1996 uh, phosphor glycosylation has been identified then 1998 palmitolization has been identified and recently in 2011 the S glycosylation has been identified and the one of the important thing that we need to uh, grab or grab from this uh, figure is that the N glycosylation and the O glycosylation as these are one of the important glycosylation uh, within the mammalian cells as more than 50% of the proteins that are uh, that have post translation modification are or have this N glycosylation or in other words we can say that more than 50% of the post translation modification in mammalian cells are either N or the combination of N glycosylation or o, N O glycosylation so I hope you have understood uh, how the you understood the chronology of the discovery of the different kind of post translation modification and what are the post translation modification that are important uh, importance in relation to the uh, disease and how this post -trans change post translation modification can be information can be used to identify how to differentiate cells from the differentiate uh, unhealthy cells from the normal or healthy cells that's all for this video. Thank you for your time.